Mali's position as one of the world's top gold producers has not resulted in benefits for its people. Instead, the mined gold was exported, benefiting Western nations in the end. Despite having significant gold reserves, Mali's economic situation deteriorated, while Western countries grew stronger in the absence of their own gold. This stark contrast emphasized the exploitation, in which European nations appeared to be siphoning Mali's natural resources without being challenged. The disparity between Mali's declining economic state and Western countries' burgeoning prosperity highlighted the one-sided exploitation. While Mali struggled, the exported gold contributed to the economic growth of distant nations, exposing a glaring injustice in the global economic landscape. This disparity painted a troubling picture of how the wealth generated by Mali's resources did not benefit its own people, but instead bolstered economies elsewhere. Mali's leaders were hesitant to oppose the exploitation of their gold reserves for fear of being replaced by more compliant successors. However, under Mali's military junta, led by President Colonel Asimi Guida, a significant shift occurred, signaling a break from this pattern. Mali chose to collaborate with Russia to establish West Africa's largest gold refinery in Bamako, the nation's capital, putting an end to the country's gold looting. This groundbreaking agreement between Mali and Russia aims to build a gold refinery with a staggering annual capacity of 200 tons, indicating a significant shift in the country's approach to its gold resources. The four-year Memorandum of Understanding focuses on comprehensive oversight of gold production to ensure accurate taxation and duty application. According to the country's statistical agency, Mali, a significant gold producer in Africa, increased industrial gold production by 88.4% in 2022, reaching 72.2 tons. Mali's fiscal revenues are heavily reliant on gold, making the country a major gold producer in Africa. Despite this, Mali has not received the anticipated revenue from its gold, necessitating 10 times the amount of mining to achieve the same earnings as other countries. Colonel Goyth of Mali has decided to sign an agreement with Russia to ensure fair payment for the country's gold resources in order to combat this exploitation. The four-year agreement, which lacks a construction timeline, aims to build Mali's largest gold refinery. This move highlights Russia's growing interests in Mali, especially as Western influence fades following the withdrawal of French forces. Meanwhile, interim president Azimi Gojta has endorsed Mali's new mining code, which increases state and local investor stakes in mining projects from 20% to 35%, aiming to double the sector's contribution to Mali's GDP to around 20%. This change aims to address revenue shortfalls while also incorporating strict environmental regulations to promote sustainable mining practices. Mali's new mining code seeks to address environmental issues such as deforestation, water pollution, and soil degradation while encouraging national ownership of mineral resources. Mining firms must now form joint ventures with state-owned enterprises, increasing the government's share of mining profits from 20% to 30%. This change has the potential to generate a $1 billion surplus for Mali each year. The emphasis on increased state ownership in the code ensures that Mali has a larger stake in mining companies, enforcing stringent environmental standards and requiring companies to invest in local communities. The agreement with Russia reflects the country's growing interest in Mali, particularly as Western influence fades. Furthermore, Rosatom, Russia's state nuclear energy company signed agreements to explore minerals, produce nuclear energy, and build a solar power plant in Mali by mid-2025. With Mali expelling French troops and engaging with Russian entities, such as the Wagner Group, there is room for collaboration if the new ally provides fair benefits to Mali. Given the country's extensive history with gold extraction, Mali's recent agreement with Russia is extremely significant. Mali produced 66.2 tons of industrial gold in 2022, primarily from mines owned by Barrett Gold, B2 Gold, Resolute Mining, Allied Gold, and Endeavor Mining. Gold remains an important export item in Mali, and it is supplemented by other minerals such as diamonds, rock salt, phosphates, and others that help the country's economy.
Malini's relationship with gold dates back to ancient times, when gold and salt were important commodities in trans-Saharan trade, particularly during the reign of Emperor Mansa Musa in the 1300s. However, colonial rule, particularly under France for over 75 years, shifted Mali's economic focus away from gold production and toward agricultural sectors, particularly cotton. Despite this shift, local communities continued to engage in artisanal mining during the colonial period, employing traditional, hand-operated gold mining techniques. During Mali's post-independence period during the Cold War, leaders aligned with the Soviet Union, most notably Musa Tror and Madibo Kida, pioneered industrial gold mining with Soviet assistance. The Kalana gold mine in southwestern Mali thrived under Soviet support but faced closure following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, which resulted in the withdrawal of support. South African mining companies dominated Mali's mining landscape by the mid-1990s. Some foreign entities attempted to resurrect previously supported Soviet mines in the area. Mali's gold mining activity, which is primarily concentrated in the Sahel region, particularly in Sakaso, Kulikoro, and Kays, has been particularly cost-effective and profitable for companies, owing to surface mines and lower labor costs. However, the profitability benefits foreign investors and corporations more than the state and its people. Industrial gold mining in Mali is primarily carried out by large corporations such as Anglo Gold Ashanti, Rand Gold, and I'm Gold, as well as smaller Canadian and Australian firms. Artisanal mining is also prevalent in the country's gold sector, with an estimated 300 to 350 mines and 400,000 workers involved. This increase in the economic importance of gold propelled Mali to the third largest gold producer in Africa, with mining contributing significantly, rising from 1.5% to 8% of GDP between 1984 and 2008. Mali's gold exports will account for 80% of total exports in 2021, supporting 2 million livelihoods. Mali was not fairly compensated for its gold, despite its significant contribution, due to foreign companies owning major stakes in the mines. This unequal distribution was exacerbated by smuggling problems, which were exacerbated by political unrest and the government's loss of control over gold-producing regions in the South. Even as reports surfaced implicating French troops in gold smuggling, the French army faced difficulties in combating illegal activities. Mali also mines diamonds in the Kenyaba region and has mineral reserves such as bauxite, iron ore, manganese, and semi-precious stones. However, the benefits of gold and other resources are rarely shared with the general public. Mali's history is characterized by intense European exploitation, particularly during France's colonization in 1892, which began an era of significant European control over Mali's gold reserves. Mali was subjected to severe exploitation during France's colonial rule, as French-imposed mining laws favored French interests over local miners, restricting Malian involvement and granting exclusive rights to French companies. These laws resulted in exploitative labor practices, such as forced labor and low wages for Malian workers. Heavy taxes on gold production diverted profits to France, stifling Mali's economic growth and exacerbating poverty. Despite Mali's abundant gold wealth, it served to fuel France's colonial economy rather than the country's development. Mali struggled after independence to reclaim control of its gold industry in order to keep profits within the country. Russia's recent involvement in the gold sector in Mali stems from Mali's desire for economic diversification as well as Russia's interest in Africa's resources. Mali sees Russia as an important source of investment and expertise for its economic development. Russia's growing presence in Africa is consistent with its strategy to gain access to natural resources and expand its market. Russia seeks to counterbalance Western influence by cultivating relationships in Africa. Mali and Russia's gold mining partnership holds promise for both countries' mutual cooperation and development. Mali's cooperation with Russia benefits both parties. Mali gains access to Russia's expertise in gold mining technology, while Russia gains access to Mali's gold resources, increasing its influence in Africa. The recent agreement represents an important step toward more equitable gold mining practices in Mali. 
Despite this promising collaboration, challenges loom. To prevent corruption and environmental damage, it is critical to ensure transparency, accountability, and governance structures. Mali must not only change exploiters, but also retain control over its new partnership, ensuring that mining revenues are used to develop infrastructure, education, and healthcare in gold-producing areas. The establishment of a gold refinery in Mali has enormous economic potential. Mali is currently exporting most of its gold unrefined, resulting in lower global prices. A local refinery would add value to the economy by increasing export revenue, creating jobs, and stimulating related industries such as transportation. Revenue from the refinery could be used to fund government programs that would benefit Malians and fuel economic growth. Mali's unrefined gold exports, which account for 70% of total exports, miss out on potential profits that refined gold could provide. A refinery could add up to 10% to the value of the land and create up to 5,000 direct jobs. Furthermore, the refinery can improve transparency in gold production and trade while addressing oversight issues in artisanal mining and combating gold smuggling. Mali aims to combat smuggling and ensure full taxation on its gold production, as smuggling costs artisanal mining $100 million per year. Mali intends to build its own refinery to reduce reliance on foreign refineries, reclaiming profits lost to foreign entities, gaining control over the refining process, and increasing revenue. Mali currently sends 80% of its coal to abroad for refining, losing billions of dollars in profits due to fees charged by foreign refineries, negatively impacting the country's economy. The collaboration with Russia on the refinery benefits Mali, while also allowing Russia to increase its influence in Africa. Russia hopes to increase its market share, foster economic growth, and strengthen regional ties by gaining direct access to Mali's gold resources. Mali stands to benefit simultaneously by monetizing its gold reserves and generating critical revenue. The establishment of a local gold refinery in Mali has numerous advantages, including job creation, local economic growth, and critical infrastructure development. This move would reduce Mali's reliance on foreign companies while also giving the government greater control over the country's gold resources. Do you think Colonel Goit's actions will help Mali's economy? Can Russia be a more reliable partner than European countries that have traditionally exploited Mali's resources? Share your ideas on how Colonel Goit can ensure that the gold this time benefits the people of Mali. Subscribe to our channel to see more videos about black culture, civilization, and history. Thank you for watching, and please check back later for our next video.